Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Wall Street from Main Street podcast. Uh, today we have a returning guest, Gregory Manorino from GregoryManorino.com. Greg, welcome back to our show. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Ah, you're welcome. We love having you on. And uh, first, uh, first topic I want to get into was your uh, prediction about oil. You said uh, or it was around 88 to get into crude, and that would be a great uh, investment. Uh, I actually saw some of the comments. Uh, comments they were saying, "Did you understand Porter Stansberry or hear about Porter?" Uh, you got a little bit of uh, flack for it, but now it's you know up to uh, 95. Uh, where do you see oil from now, and uh, what made you uh, get into crude? You know, I've been I've been saying this for a long time. Um, oil is is really black gold, and understand it is priced in dollars. So. We understand the dollar is under fierce attack by the current administration here in the United States in collusion with the Federal Reserve. So as the dollar continues its terminal decline, something I've been talking about for a very long time, we're going to see commodities rise across the board, and crude oil is one of them. Um, and, and it's no secret. Yeah, I think what people need to understand is... It's not that these these things just become more valuable. It's that the dollar is losing its its power to purchase things. And you, this is reflected even in the stock market. If the dollar is losing value, even shares of stock will require more of these dollars to buy them. So it'll drive the market higher. And I think it's all an illusion that they want people to believe, hey, you know, look at the stock market. It's reaching all new, you know, new time highs and everything else. And it's, it's, it's a distraction. It makes people think that the economy is getting better. But, and that's another thing. People believe or are led to believe that the overall markets are economic indicators and they are not economic indicators. And I've been over this many, many, many times. Um, so again, going back to crude oil, it's got nowhere to go but up, um, for many, many reasons. And I think the number one factor is the dollar is being crushed with purpose on purpose. It's a deliberate uh, attack against the dollar. Uh, and people are going to be hurt by this because the cost of living is going to continue to rise. And we'll, this is going to be reflected on in, uh, across the board with um, their ability to support themselves and their families. Yeah, I definitely agree. And not only that, if you just look at the cost of production of these, some of these companies, oil needs to maintain a high price just to become economical. I just uh, I look at some of these companies and they're uh, loaded with debt and they have huge cost production rising. Oh, absolutely. And that's going to continue to rise, too. And that that cost is going to be, again, like you just said, pushed on to the people. These are very interesting times that we're living in. We've never seen anything like this before. Uh, the United States debt burden is, uh, at this point, um, so extreme that there cannot be a recovery. We we, uh, we, ha we understand that. I mean, the United States needs a complete turnaround. We have to stop consuming and start producing it's the only way to save the united states the united states unfortunately is with a, the u.s dollar in a terminal phase at this point it is not uh, uh, able to recover it cannot recover and we understand that our policymakers are doing everything they can to twist the truth and 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 make people believe that the united states is immune to what is affecting the rest of the world um, and, and, and that's just not true. Yeah, no one's immune to the laws of economics. I definitely would say that. And your latest prediction is sort of the unsung hero of the medals. Uh, it's actually uh, was the best performance one was palladium. Oh. And you said you're uh, now in palladium. What inspired palladium as over something like platinum or something? Well, I think that, you know, looking forward here, I mean, you know, I'm not I'm not an in the now guy. What I mean by that is I'm always thinking ahead. It, it drives me crazy. It drives my wife crazy. <laughs> you know, I, I, I never sit still and live in the moment. And I think that's the problem with most people is they do live in the moment like a child or like 
like an animal. Um, you know, dogs live in the moment, cats live in the moment, they don't think about the future, and they, have, and they don't even realize they have a past. So with, with something like with palladium, at one point, um, whenever that may be, um, there will be a turnaround here, and I am kind of betting that at one point the United States economy will turn around after this epic crash, which is coming, and we will start to produce things. So what does that mean? Uh, industrial metals like palladium are going to um, rise in value. Um, so this is for me, and I think for your listeners, more of a long-term uh, investment. Uh, and, and, and I do believe it is going to uh, rise multiple fold um, as we go forward here. Um, in the short run, I, I think the spot to be in is silver, as, as you know. Um, I like gold too, but I think of, of all the metals, silver is going to outperform uh, everything by leaps and bounds for, for many, many reasons. But palladium is definitely a long-term play that I think your listeners should, uh, should start looking into. So, yeah, I definitely agree. And I would say just from my opinion, you know, if you don't have any precious metals yet or if you have very little or let's say you're just buying a little bit each week and you're still not firmly entrenched, I wouldn't dip into palladium just yet. I would definitely get firmly entrenched first. Would you agree? Or? Oh, absolutely. You know, I think, you know, like I said, you know, if people have limited means, which unfortunately most people do, um, is you should be looking into silver. Silver, and I've been saying this since day one, in my opinion, is the most undervalued asset in the history of the world. And people ask me all the time. I get hundreds, if not thousands, of emails a week um, saying, hey, Greg, you know, where should I put my cash? Where should I put my cash? It's very simple. Silver. Period. At the end. Um, that's, that, to me, is uh, something that's going to pay off better than any other investment anyone can think about. Uh, and, and not even in, not in the long, long term, I and mean, we could be talking a few years out here, but if you're smart enough to get into this metal now, um, you're, you will be rewarded um, down the line. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I definitely agree. And not only that, I think more and more people are sort of waking up to silver. You're seeing the U.S. Mint has now suspended sales because they're unable to keep up with orders. And now the Royal Canadian Mint, is suspending sales, and uh, as someone who also, uh, you know, is very frequent in the bullion industry, you know, uh, junk silver, you know, that stuff, you know, delays are being, uh, shipping delays are about six to seven weeks now. Uh, what do you think of this, and why hasn't the price really spiked like in a normal free market force? <laughs> well, I think you just hit the nail on the head there. In a normal free market, there is no free market. There's no free market at all. The free market has been stolen away since the crash of 2008 when the government took over and the Federal Reserve started, started printing money and the TARP program. So what people need to keep in mind is there is no doubt, zero, and, uh, and, and I think that most of your listeners would agree here, is there is manipulation by the investment banks um, with regard to these metals, and they're doing this on purpose. Understand that the world's central banks, the investment banks, the richest people in the world are not in fiat. In other words, they are acquiring hard assets they are, uh, like gold and silver. And if they can keep this price suppressed as long as humanly possible, they're going to do that so they can acquire more and more of these ridiculously, again, suppressed prices. But at one point, at one point, the free market will once again be allowed to do its job. What is the job of the free market? To establish fair market value, period, the end. That's all it does. And at one time... We're going to see this all turn around and across the board regarding commodities, regarding the dollar, regarding the debt. This is all going to come to roost probably at about the same time. And a, and a, 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 a epic shift is going to take place that I think people are not going to believe when once again, again, the free market is allowed to do its job. I was also wondering, do you think that some of these shortages are also like I'm starting to see new people into the market that don't have too much money, but, you know, they're just below the baby boom in this uh, generation. I don't know if they're quite the baby boom. Maybe there's some are baby boomers, and they've never owned it before, and they're starting to realize, you know, something that we thought our country was immune to yeah. is, ha is happening, and uh, uh, just more people are waking up to it. Do you see it recently? Or I agree 100%, and I, and I think that it's... 
I think people are starting to get it. And I think that's why shows like this is so important. Um, people are starting to say, hey, you know, what is really going on here? Why can't um, I buy things that, you know, I used to be able to buy even, even last year. Now the, the prices have gone up, you know, by 30% or more. And people are starting to say, hey, how can I preserve my purchasing power? What's going on here? Um, I think people are very... Um, disheartened with what's going on here in government, they see that it's crisis after crisis uh, that that you know we're seeing on the mainstream media regarding um, the fiscal cliff nonsense. That was absolute an absolute joke, and now the debt ceiling. Um, so they realize there's a problem, and they understand that currency um, backed by nothing uh, is is literally nothing but pieces of paper with numbers printed on them and its day is over uh, and there is a move back to a commodity a back currency uh, this is no doubt uh, it's been in the works for quite a while and, and, and I think people just don't understand that so and that's why we're seeing uh, for example um, something that we have not seen since the terrorist attacks of September 11th is people are pulling their money out of the banks uh, they realize that they're, why should they have it in there? They're not earning any, any interest on it. Um, and they need to do something with it. And I believe what's going on and something I've been talking about for the longest time is people are getting sick of holding on to a dying asset. I'm referring to the U.S. dollar. And the problem with that is these dollars are going to be spent or quote unquote dumped while they still have some purchasing power. And that is going to actually make the situation somewhat worse, uh, actually much, much worse, because as these dollars get dumped and added to the circulation, circulating bills um, and coins, we're going to start to see massive amounts of inflation. It's a vicious cycle that won't stop. And, and there's a very strong chance that we're going to see hyperinflation here in the United States. Yeah, and speaking of uh, the, you were talking about the, fiscal cliff and what a joke that is, uh, it seems like Washington has moved on to its next joke, the debt ceiling, saying they're only going to raise it for three months. In my opinion, they're going to raise it continuously. There's no way they're just going to do it for three months. Then all of a sudden, fiscal responsibility is the norm. Would you agree? A hundred percent, because this, and this is, again, what people don't understand. We have a debt-based economic model. Uh, if your listeners aren't sure what that is, just look it up. What it means in its most basic sense, is in order for this to function, money or cash has to be borrowed into existence in perpetuity. It cannot stop. Once we admit we cannot acquire any more debt, we have a crisis like they have in Europe. All right? Now, that is going to happen here. This is why we ha have not had a balanced budget here in the United States in, in years and why they cannot stop borrowing. Again, if it all comes down to the fact that if money is not continuously and relentlessly borrowed into existence, it's party over at that moment. And this is why we have a debt bubble that is going to burst. And when that bubble bursts, think of the ramifications of that. Interest rates are going to go to the moon, which is going to put enormous pressure on the stock markets, which are going to sell off rapidly and all of this cash does not go to money heaven it is going to end up in someone else's pocket and you're going to see commodities explode to the upside that's how this is going to play out yeah i definitely uh see that and uh one thing that i want to revisit is when i first interviewed you talked about a uh, civil war happening here and, you know, I was just like, wow, I don't know if it'll go there. But now you're starting to see, you know, when Obama got elected, secessionist movements, uh, a lot of people, they just want out of the U.S. You see a lot of uh, states signing uh, secessionist reviews. Um, where is this going to go? It's obviously gone a little bit further. Uh, how much further do we have to go and how short of a time do you think? Mm, that, that's interesting. OK, well, let, let's just say this. Lately, we've been seeing a lot of very unfortunate um, things going on here in the United States with regard to increasing violence. This is the beginning. This is the beginning of this, and uh, they're trying to spin it every way they can, but it's the beginning of the collapse. 
the dollar again in the terminal phase people are being duped or they're, they're, they're being told everything is getting better but it's not they're starting to rebel across the board and this this plays into why they want our guns. They want our guns because they understand that this civil unrest is going to get much, much worse. You know, what people don't realize as well as going on here is every, every state in the union, their police are being militarized. What I mean by that is they're getting military weapons and military training. We, we already understand that there are drones patrolling the skies of the United States um, and spying on us all. Why? Take, why? Because they're expecting a terrorist attack? Absolutely not. They understand where this is going. Civil unrest is going to explode as the dollar continues to die. All right. It's in a terminal phase. It's, it cannot come out of it because, because they're deliberately trying to kill it. We have the Federal Reserve printing 85 billion a month. In, in perpetuity, and it can't stop. I don't care what they say. They're lying. They know they can't stop doing this. The moment they stop doing this, we cannot fund the United States. We cannot pay our debts. The whole house of cards will explode. People on the streets will revolt because they won't be able to, they'll try to buy a, a gallon of milk and it's going to be 10, 20, 30, 40 dollars. They won't, this is the scenario that is going to happen on a global level because the U.S. dollar is still the reserve currency. When that debt bubble bursts, resources are not going to be available to people because they won't be able to acquire them. And on a global level, people are going to um, completely lose it. And we're going to have civil wars, regional wars, global wars. And, and, and this is no joke. People are going to die by the millions because of the infighting, because of the inability to acquire these resources. This is the progression of where things are going. And I believe, sincerely, there's no way out of it right now. It cannot stop. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I was also, I actually found some community. It was called the Citadel. Citadel. It's in uh, Idaho. And it's basically a uh, community based on self-sufficiency. And they basically, for our audience that doesn't know, uh, they, they require you to have stored food. They require you to have arms. Uh, you live in a castle, and it's like a community, and, well, I already said community, but uh, they they are open up their own business. This one has a gun business, and it's trying to have a vacation resort, and uh, they said their dream is Thomas Jefferson's liberty, and I was just wondering, don't, you know, I think one thing they're right on is if we listen to people like Thomas Jefferson from the beginning, uh, we wouldn't be in this mess, <laughs> and I think that these uh, communities of self-sufficiency uh, are showing that people want out of this system. Even if they can't articulate, they want out. Wouldn't you say? 100%. We have, you see, when we deviated from the United States Constitution and we left the gold standard, what that did was it, it allowed some people to profit at the expense of everyone else. In other words, we have a debt. We went from an, an, an economic model that was based against uh, – based for making people prosperous to one that steals away their wealth. So we have a debt-based economy. I mean, just to put this into perspective, you would go on eBay right now and you would look up, like, I don't know, a 1964 dime or something. It would probably sell for around two bucks or something like that. So what that means is if we were still on the gold standard, a gallon of gasoline would cost you what? I don't know, 15 cents? So, so that's really what's going on here. The wealth is being stolen from the people, and, and then it, it's getting progressively worse. So you have the Federal Reserve attacking the dollar, printing more money, and every dollar that's either printed or added to a, a, a computer screen steals value from every other existing dollar or coin that's out there, and we all get poorer because our, our purchasing power gets stolen away. Now, people are trying to get away from that system. I understand exactly what you said. And this is, I think this movement that you're talking about is going to get much, much greater. And they're, and they're going to start cracking down on that because they don't want it. They don't want people in gold. They don't want people in silver. They want them in the fiat money. Because uh, you have to understand, you know, at, at its most basic level, the Federal Reserve is running the biggest Ponzi scheme the world has ever known. They print this money out of thin air, disperse it to the world, the reserve currency, and then as soon as that 
those bills leave the Federal Reserve, they begin to acquire interest. Interest that's paid by more money printed out of thin air. It's a Ponzi scheme. And it's the biggest conflict of interest going back to the suppression of the price of gold and silver. They're hoarding this stuff. Not only are central banks hoarding gold, but they're hoarding silver now. Uh, it just came to light, I think, last week or the week before. HSBC is hoarding silver. Uh, and they're not the only investment bank and all the, all the central banks are doing this. So think about it. The more fiat that these central banks spew to the world, the higher the value will go of their precious metals. So this is a conflict of interest of epic proportions. No one's talking about it. And again, why? It's because it's being set up with purpose. This is a wealth transfer that we're literally watching under our news. It's happening right before our eyes. And people, I hope, because of shows like this, are starting to wake up and starting to understand that they need to get away from fiat currency. They need to get out of this debt-based economic model and do it now. Because the, the, the alternative is to be absolutely fleeced and lose everything you have because that's what they're going to do. We're moving to a two-tier society. The middle class, despite what comes out of President Obama's mouth, is going to lose it all. We're going to have a, 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 a society of the haves and the have-nots. And the haves are going to be maybe 1% or 2% of the entire population. Everyone else is going to be left desperate and destitute. Yeah, it's sort of unfortunate. So, um, so basically, uh, if people want to find out more about you, how can they do so? Um, it's real simple. Right now my website is downgregormanarino.com, unfortunately, but I'm working on a, a few things. But if they want to find me, um, they can friend me on Facebook. Um, I never turn down a friend. You can uh, find me on Google, YouTube. I do my daily uh, market report on um, business days. So uh, it's easy to get a hold of me. Very simple. Put in my name, Gregory Manarino, anywhere, and you'll find me. All right, great. Thanks for coming on, and we look forward to having you back on in the future. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it.